G'day guys, welcome back again. I had a heap of lovely comments about my golden brown pour that I did yesterday. I'm just going to shut the door. My daughter's home and she's got her parrot out and he's being a bit noisy. So, back to the brown and gold pour. So, let me see if I can show it to you. That's it there. I did that one last night. 30 by 40 centimetre card or 12 by 16 inch. And that one has coconut milk hair serum in it. Now, this is my pouring medium, uh, same one I've been using for a little while now. Three parts Votrol, two parts PVA, one part pouring medium. I have thinned this out a little bit. I've added a touch of water, so I don't know whether or not that's going to be a good thing. It still leaves a tiny little mound on top. So we'll see. It is thinner, though. Hopefully I won't get mud. So I've mixed... For my colours, not the metallic, but for the colours, three parts pouring medium to one part paint. And for my gold, it's two to one. So two parts pouring medium to one part paint. And I've got 90 grams of pouring medium in each cup and 30 grams of paint. So that's three to one. So there you go. And now I'm going to try dimethicone. And I'm going to put, because I've got, what did I say, 90 and 30, so 120 grams. So I'm going to put four drops in each. It's quite thick. I have to give it a good squeeze to get, get it out. It's thicker than the coconut milk hair serum. I won't do the white or the black. It doesn't tend to leave a little trace either like the coconut milk serum did. Just sort of squeeze and a drop falls out. How many was that? Three. All right, let's do one more. Four. Okay. And because it is quite thick, I'm going to give it a good stir. Like so. Get around the sides. Actually, as it's been sitting, it has thickened up a little bit. So maybe it's all right with that touch of water in it. I did go through uh, a bit of a run on using water in my pouring medium. You would have seen them on my, my videos. Um, I think this one, you won't be able to see it all in, in, the, um, in that frame there, but that one I used three parts blood troll, two parts pouring medium, Oh, sorry, three parts flytrol, two parts glue, one part pouring medium and half a part of water. So that was it there. That's turned out really nicely. <clears throat> so try that one again. <clears throat> Let's get to layering. I'll put two layers in each of the cups. Black first. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the gold. I like the gold with the black. So it's still sitting on top, which is good. It's not falling straight through. If it falls straight through, then it's too thin and it's going to mix in the cup and you don't want that. You want it to hopefully sit on top a little bit. If you don't want to pour like this, you can just pour down the side as you would into a jug if you're doing a ring pour. You can just you know, pour down the side like that. So either works. I like to do this just so I can see the consistency and if, as I said, if it falls through then I know it's too thin. So I've got two shades of brown and I'll go through the colours once I've flipped the cups over. A black, a white and a gold. And then I'll put the brown the lighter brown and now the black again on top of that. So we go light, dark, light, dark, as I always do. 
I think you just get the best cells when you alternate light and dark. If you put two light colours next to each other, the cells aren't going to show up very well. If you put two dark colours next to each other, again, the cells aren't going to do much. You need that difference in the light and the dark so that your cell gets maybe a dark ring around the outside and a light centre or vice versa, a light ring around the outside and a dark centre. If the colours are too similar, your centre and your ring are going to be very similar in colour and, and it's just not going to show up. So that's the reason for light, dark, light, dark. Finish off the gold. I've got a few different shades of gold and I didn't want one that was too bright. So this is just a sort of a medium gold. And because light's a dark colour, I'm using my darker brown next rather than the lighter brown on top of the gold. Even though your metallics feel a bit thicker in the jar or in the tube, once they're mixed up with the pouring medium, the consistency changes and they get quite thin. So I always find to bring them up to the same thickness so that you don't lose them in your pour, you have to mix them thicker. So that's why I do them two to one instead of my three to one that I do my other paint set. They're just a different consistency, metallics. If you're using Nipotex Basics, which is a very similar sort of consistency to the global, you would use four parts pouring medium to one part Liquitex. Because they are a little bit thicker, so you'd have to just thin them out a touch more. And I find that the Liquitex Basics metallics are really difficult to, to stir in. They take a lot of stirring and I find that I have to add pouring medium a bit by bit. If I add it all together, it just goes lumpy. So a little bit at a time, stir well, a little bit more, stir well for the Liquitex Basics metallics. Okay, Let's see what happens with that, hey? Gee, it's been a long time since I've used pure dimethicone, over a year. Okay, so we have black and white, as usual. And then for the gold, this one is called bling. You can't buy it anymore, but that's the colour there. It's a bright gold. The, just the plain metallic gold is pretty as well. Now my two browns, you can see the difference in colour. Just a little, that one's more chocolate and this one's sort of a more fawn colour. This one's burnt sienna and burnt umber. So that's those two. I did try one of the pores yesterday with copper as well. And I found that the copper was too similar to the burnt sienna, that one. And I got, I got that result there. So it just looked a bit too brown. So I took the copper out. And so taking the copper out gave me that one. It just lightened it up a little bit. So who knows what we're gonna to get today. Hopefully something similar to that one I just showed you. You can see the consistency of the paint. It just sort of, when I drop a piece on there, it just sits in its blob. It doesn't spread too much. <clears throat> if your cells are getting all sort of wobbly and mushy around the edges, it may well be because you're overheating them and you're melting them. So just be careful of that. Oops, losing it over the edge. Okay, that's a nice consistency, better than the previous one. Look at that gold. 
You see how the paint's spreading? It's moving. So that's a good sign too. Got a caterpillar, unfortunately. It's probably because my cup's dragged across the paint. All right, plenty of paint. When you're doing this sort of flip cup, to maintain, maintain your cells, it's a good idea to get as much paint on the surface as you can so that you only have to tilt a little bit to cover these areas. If you've only got a tiny little bit of paint, you really have to tilt a lot to get to all your little bald sections and that's when you lose your cell definition. So, got a few little bubbles. I'm gonna give it a quick torch. I can't even remember how dimethicone reacts to heat, but not too close because, as I said, if you heat your cells and you've got a lovely round cell, you heat it and it melts and it's going to just lose its shape and go all mushy looking. So basically just popping bubbles. I don't want any more cells to come up. I'm happy with the amount of cells I've got there. I don't want just, you know, cell mania. I want a little bit of background with some nicely shaped cells here and there. That's the, that's the ideal that I'm looking for. Not just a mass of cells that bump into each other. And once the cells hit each other, then they lose their shape. Because they're a nice round cell and that bumps into each other and it sort of goes flat. So that's what I want anyway. I'm not asking for much, am I? All right, let's get to tilting. And we'll go side to side. I don't know if these cups are in the way. Move them out. Side to side. Okay, that's that side covered. wipe under there so you can see the edge of it. Now the cells I don't think are going to be huge because I haven't stretched them that much. If you don't use as much paint you can obviously stretch everything a little bit more but it's a fine line because the more you stretch the more you're going to lose your shelf shell cell shape <laughs> so you just have to be aware now I don't like this bit here how that's curved around so I'm going to push that off the edge I should have enough paint to do that that's because when I've brought my cup up it's curved and it can't be helped I've tried lots of different ways of preventing that and it just hasn't worked all that well Paint is flowing really nicely. I, I like that mix with a little bit of water in it. See, I can move that around really easily. My, the majority of the paint sitting right here and I can move that and those cells are just moving with it. They're not stretching out which is great, which is what you want. Now, can I get my finger under there? Just clean up the edges. Okay. Well, that's pretty. I'm happy with those cells. My goodness. Probably haven't got as much black in it as I would have liked, I think. I can't remember if I had a little bit more black in my last one. And I didn't do a video, so I can't look back on it. Now, I'm just going to pop the bubbles because I have got some bubbles there. I've only just mixed up the paint this morning, so it hasn't had a chance to sit. And then when I tip it out, it gets a little bit more air in it. So the dimethicone is not that right reactive to heat, which is good. I was able to torch. There's a few little cells popped up there, as you can see. 
I don't mind the little cells. As I've said before, I like a variety of cell sizes. I'm just trying to think if I like this one as much as the other one. This one's got a little bit more, well, it's got a bit of water in it. That's the other one. More black's shown through on that one. This one's probably a little bit more brown. Cells are really nice though. I don't know that there's much difference in cell shape. Can you see any difference in the cell shape between the coconut milk hair serum and the pure dimethicone? Hmm. Hard to know, isn't it? Every pore's different. You can use the same paints and same technique and the same everything and still you get a different pore. So more white, I think, in this. You can see the white line through there. There's white through there. There's more white through there, which is pretty. But I've lost the black. Not a lot of black in there. Okay. I'll take you in for a close-up. But yeah, I'm loving those cells. They're really pretty. Now, let's see if I can go any closer. There we go, that's about as close as I can get you. What do you think? I think I would have liked it better with a little bit more black, but hey, it's still a pretty poor. And so many people asked me how I did that one. So there you go. Have a go at it. Join the Australian Acrylic Pouring Group on Facebook and show me what you've done. I'd love to see your pours. You can have a chat with me there. All right, uh, I've got lots of work today. I have to mix up a lot of paint, more pouring medium. So I'll see you for the next pour. Bye for now.